On Monday, April 8th, there will be a total solar eclipse and there won't be another over the US until 2044. The US Space Agency will launch three rockets into the Moon's shadow during the solar eclipse. The celestial event will give scientists an opportunity to study how Earth's upper atmosphere is affected when sunlight momentarily dims over a portion of the planet, according to NASA. Specifically, they will be looking at the disturbances created in the ionosphere, which is the boundary between Earth's lower atmosphere, where we live and breathe, and the vacuum of space. It is made up of a sea of particles that become ionized or electrically charged from the sun's energy or solar radiation. When night falls, the ionosphere thins out as previously ionized particles relax and recombine back into neutral particles. However, Earth's terrestrial weather and space weather can impact these particles, making it a dynamic region and difficult to know what the ionosphere will be like at a given time. The US Space Agency will use three sounding rockets, which will themselves each eject four secondary instruments the size of a two-liter soda bottle that will allow researchers to gather similar data as if they had launched 15 rockets. Sounding rockets can be ideal for carrying out scientific experiments, able to transport scientific instruments into regions of space like the ionosphere, which is between 55 to 310 miles above the ground. The rockets will be launched at three different times from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The first will take off 45 minutes before the peak local eclipse, another during it, and then a final one 45 minutes after the peak local eclipse. The intervals are important, according to NASA, in order to collect data on how the sun's sudden disappearance affects the ionosphere. As the eclipse shadow races through the atmosphere, it creates a rapid, localized sunset that triggers large-scale atmospheric waves and small-scale disturbances or perturbations. These perturbations affect different radio communication frequencies. Gathering the data on these perturbations will help scientists validate and improve current models that help predict potential disturbances to our communications, especially high-frequency communication. Several teams across the U.S. will be using other means to take measurements of the ionosphere during the solar eclipse. Together, with the data from the sounding rockets, it will aid in providing the pieces of the puzzle needed to create a more complete picture of ionospheric dynamics. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos.